So I'm going to use uh, a slightly different persona today. I'm also an investor and a, uh, a member of the board of a company called LivePlex. And I'm so happy that speakers this morning have introduced words like uh, metaverse and blockchain early on in the conversation so that I'm not the first one to broach this here today. You know, um, we talked yesterday about the great rethink and it's clear a number of people yesterday made the point metaphorically or in real terms uh, that there's a fire in the kitchen of the house built by Qadi Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah at this point. Since 1947, there's been a lot of challenges. I remain and I always will be an incredible uh, fan of Pakistan and I am absolutely sure that without minimizing the challenges that are faced, we will get through this one. But I want to make the point that at the same time as many of us are looking at putting out the fire and rebuilding the kitchen, the world moves ahead. And the goalposts change. And the goals and the, the kind of challenges that we face externally will continue and the opportunities will continue to grow. And we talked a little bit yesterday about 5G versus 4G. I've got a very strong opinion about this, uh, and I'll leave it to the regulators and the operators to make their decisions. But don't wait too long. In 2014, when I first came here, we launched 3G and 4G simultaneously. I want to remind you, because sometimes we forget, that when we launched 3G, we were 13 years behind the rest of the world. When we launched 4G, we were six years, seven years behind the rest of the world. By launching 5G this year, next year, we'll be about two or three years behind the world. Technologically, there has been work done to catch up, and I think that needs to be marked and it needs to be congratulated. And it's not about the number of 5G handsets that exist in the market. It's about home broadband, it's about high-speed data to businesses and university, it's about universal access to the kind of applications that we've been discussing here today. So my advice is don't wait too long. Now that's the end of my editorial for today, let me get into my presentation. And let's get into my presentation, there we go. So the key thing I want to leave you with today is I want you to remember that we have to continue to reinvent ourselves. Uh, the terminology changes, the language that we speak changes, the way we do business uh, changes. A previous speaker spoke about the fact that, you know, it was COD and now it's e-currencies in China. Well, the same thing is happening all over the world. It happens very quickly. This is one of the favorite quotes I have by Rudy Dorsich. He's a long past professor. Said would say uh, that in economics, things take a long thing to happen, but when they happen, they happen faster than they ever thought it would. And, and a good example of that is the first electric car was in 1908 or 1910. Looked like a Model T Ford. Took forever to happen, but when it started happening. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about metaverse, uh, blockchain, uh, and the technologies that exist now to make this happen because it is real, it's happening now and today. And if we don't catch up, we're going to be left behind. So. 20 years ago, this was our experience of online, uh, uh, online websites. Flat pages, we've all seen these, perhaps many of us. We all remember, for those of us who have sufficient maturity, the sound of uh, uh, the dial-up modem, ding, ding, and <sighs> which I was hoping to have a sound effect, but I wasn't able to put it in here. That is long gone. The world looks a little bit more like this, and I want to kind of unpack this slide a little bit. Uh, and it kind of leads us into the discussion of the changes that we're living and the fact that it is, this stuff is really relevant now and today, and it needs to be part of the discussion. And I was really happy to see one of the speakers this morning talk about a you know, metaverse application of the, uh, of the invoice factoring industry, the invoice management industry that he's working on. Imagine that. Metaverse for us is really gaming. And look at this slide. Uh, so we have two uh, experiences of Zoom calls. Uh, 
And uh, I can tell you that based on my personal experience, the little one on the left, uh, on the bottom of the screen, her and her peers were much more behave, well behaved on Zoom than the people on the upper left hand side. They learned the code a lot faster. But in 2000, when things happened here and we couldn't meet as much, we stepped into a different world. We stepped into a different world and adapted on how we could get together with each other. With all its positives and negatives and the debate about being together and not being together, this worked. And in fact, some of us even started uh, buying backgrounds or finding backgrounds. So it didn't look like the ratty curtains in the living room or the closet where your wife had locked you or your husband had locked you to do the calls because you were disturbing the rest of the household. You created a little world for yourself in Zoom. And the same thing with Logan, my daughter on the bottom. She was in grade, she was in 2000, she was in kindergarten. She really was able to manage it and it was completely natural for her. Imagine how the buying experience will be for people who grew up with this kind of experience. The two other slides show something interesting. This is a kind of commerce that we didn't have maybe 10 years ago. And for those of you who have teenage, well, maybe 8 to 20-year-old, they're still children, by the way, they're not off the payroll, 20-year-old, okay, and they're online, they start things inside environments which are probably pretty foreign to you but I would enjoin you to take a look in and like one of the moderators saying find a game that you like and get in there this is real commerce billions and billions of dollars of commerce that happens in stores that have no physical experience and the products sometimes are not physical but they can be based upon metaverse technology, tokenization, and blockchain. And Roblox, for anybody who thinks that this is only a teenager, my daughter uses Roblox as an environment where she games and plays with friends from around the world. She's seven years old. It's really quite interesting how things change. This is very relevant. Is it so much of a leap of imagination? Okay, think about our world of Zoom today. Think about what websites looked like 10 years ago and where they are today. Our world of Zoom today with increased processing power, rendering devices that we will not be in a more immersive environment when we do things. Not just meetings, but shopping, going to school, maybe taking a test drive in a car, having an avatar built for ourselves that looks with our sizes, we all cheat a bit, but we'll try to keep it as and going and trying on clothes. Many of us now know exactly the size of Levi's jeans that we wear. We don't go to the store, we buy them there. We go to the store, see the product, take a picture of the tag, go to Amazon and try to buy it there. Imagine having that shopping experience evolve. So I want you to know that for almost every one of our businesses, this is very relevant. It's not just about the math of transactions that blockchain helps us do and secure and create different. It's really about the whole experience. So two definitions that I think, by the way, these slides are fully available. I'll leave my, what, my, my, my email at the end. I'll pass them all on to you immediately. Web3 is a new iteration of the internet. Web 1, what I showed you on the screen uh, earlier. Web 2, kind of what we live today with user-created content, a lot of interactivity, video, and so on. Web 3 decentralizes the web, creates opportunity for transactions in a different way. Content is more owned, and the control is more in the hands of the, of the user. And it's important that you understand these concepts, and you learn them, and you get somebody in your business at least focusing a bit of time on that. So metaverse is not about Spider-Man multiverse. That's not what that story is about. Metaverse is these environments. You saw a picture of one a little earlier where people can immerse themselves and actually accomplish activities, interact with each other. And for those of you who do massive gaming, those of you who in the world of war blocks where you have people walking around and talking to each other, this is changing very quickly 
It is entirely relevant. And if you look at the people who form the majority of our population in emerging markets, this is appealing as well. So I want you to remember these two things. Important concepts that you should learn about. Blockchain. So our company, uh, uh, Live Pl uh, LivePlex, uh, plugs in either to a proprietary blockchain at Oracle or we can plug into any blockchain. And blockchain is a distributed ledger. So instead of the data residing or the decision residing or the asset residing in one computer, it resides in a bunch of computers and it cannot be changed. You can only add to it. And when you add to it, a block is created, it's added to the chain, it's immutable, it doesn't change because it exists on a number of different computers, distributed physically, geographically, or logically. And this allows us to have great uh, control over uh, information and to create assets that are real and that are uh, manageable, saleable, divisible. Smart contracts are simply blockchain-based agreements. And in a simple term, once the condition precedents are accomplished, the contract executes based on the rules of that contract. And that contract could be, for example, if you look at those digital assets, these tokens, I produce clean electricity through um, uh, solar. I can package up a number of megawatts of this electricity into a token, put it on the blockchain, it represents this, and then anybody can buy that token and consume energy based from a, uh, a, a clean source. So for those of us looking at what to do with energy here, maybe we charge more for dirty energy. Maybe we charge less for clean energy, or the reverse, depending on the business models. These three fundamentals are things that everybody that is conscious about running a business should start to absorb. And remember, we went through this before. When we started getting on internet and web, there was a whole bunch of new concepts we had to learn. And the speaker that's following you, Jimmy, is an expert in this area. You can ask him all your questions if you want. He'll be able to answer anything you have about these issues. So, uh, you know, we provide the technology, the underpinning. We're not uh, a, um, a company that provides financial services. We're not a company that provides retail. Uh, LivePlex provides a set of application programming interfaces, APIs, for about 15 industries. We run them natively uh, or on the Oracle blockchain. And then companies come to us to use these APIs to be able to transform into the business. So this is not science fiction. This is very real. It's happening here, now, today. And I just asked my colleague in Dubai to give me a list of who was there now. So Coca-Cola, INSEAD, the great university uh, organization across Europe and Asia, AT&T, Deutsche Telekom, uh, Prudential Insurance, Echo Bank in Africa, are all creating products and services and environments based upon this blockchain technology, this set of APIs. Now, in the interests of time, there are four things that we need to do. We need to build environments. We need to build experiences with assets that we put into online. And we need to find ways to monetize these things. So these are basically how do you transfer the money-making part of this into this environment that's engaging, and then create an engaging experience for people. And this is what we do in Palo Alto, California, a little bit less out here. So you know, here, here are the industries, I mean, media and entertainment, loyalty and rewards, corporate training, utilities, telco, fashion, gaming, of course, insurance, real estate, retail, public sector, hospitality, education, of course, banking and finance. And when I said that the young will lead, I am probably three times the average age of the people who work in this company. Uh, and the users that are attuned to this are the users that are currently, we see, attached in gaming and in education uh, more and more. And in particular, I think if you look at the first picture I showed you about Logan, she's seven years old. She will never go to school like any of us went to school. Her experience is going to be completely different. Yes, there will be these experiences where you come together, but our classmates will be from all over the world. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, I'm not going to go through this in detail. I will make the slides available. 
but there's a set of assets for each of these technologies that we, uh, we put out in terms of the APIs that are made available. And uh, clearly, banking and insurance is top of the list. We even have some banks here. And let's be clear, we're not immune. All banks are going to be going into this area as an extension, or most of them anyways. And, you know, when we talk about cryptocurrencies or blockchain, uh, this is happening here as well. The central bank here is now looking, as we were talking earlier, to uh, central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Everyone, we, we predicted this as soon as it started happening in China, but many markets, in fact, in the markets where I operate in Africa, there are 54 countries, I think about 50 of them now, their central banks are looking at how can they capture value from the economy by, by bringing in central bank digital currencies. You need to study this carefully because there's a lot of pros and there's a lot of challenges with this because it's based on similar technologies as crypto, but crypto was a freedom creator. Uh, it allowed you to do transactions peer-to-peer -peer without any intermediaries. It allows you, it was kind of a little disruptive and I should have put it archa uh, um, uh, anarchic in the way it approached things. Central bank digital currencies mean every one of your transactions is uh, tracked even more than it was before. But it's happening everywhere and these is going to happen. Another example is going to be education. I think this is going to be absolutely important. And INSEAD in particular has picked this. So for those of you who are in HR and you have to verify if a certificate is real or not, when your certificate is issued as a token, as a digital asset, as well as a piece of paper because you want to put something on your wall, this is absolutely critically important for us. This actually allows you to check the veracity of certificates and of qualifications. The content, the experience will change and grow as well. Um, retail, of course, we already see that happening very aggressively and people being able to uh, try on clothes, buy things, see them. We buy a lot of stuff online. We all said nobody's ever going to buy high ticket items online, yet people buy cars online now. Utilities, I spoke briefly about that and that's a really important piece as well. If you're going to be uh, marketing clean power, how are you going to make sure that the power that you buy, sir, is clean if you want to buy clean power? You have to find a way to, to make that happen. And gaming and sports as well. So let me just wrap up by saying, on this uh, slide, I've left some contact information. For those who want to have the pack, uh, LivePlex has a set of resources. It's the top link where you can go to school. It takes you about half a day over any time you want. It's 10 short courses to give you a little bit of a picture of the things we're talking about. Let me wrap up by saying very simply, uh, the world is not stopping. We talked a lot about generative AI yesterday and how quick that happened to us. This is happening very fast. Yes, we have to deal with our issues, but we have incredible resources in IT and technology in this country. We need to focus some of this on here, and we're here to help if you need anything. Thank you very much. For